Learning to live with fire here begins with understanding the natural landscapes we call home. Chaparral is the predominant ecosystem in Southern California. These are native shrublands, a unique dynamic community of plants and animals that has evolved over millions of years. Historically, the fire return interval in Chaparral is usually between 30 to 130 years plus. And what that allowed for was incredibly beautiful old growth chaparral stands, where you get manzanitas with trunks the size of your waist. And they'd have these beautiful canopies across miles and miles of hillsides. And that's where the California grizzly bear used to hang out. But now throughout Southern California, fires are recurring every 10 years or so. Chaparral cannot survive that kind of frequency. That's just too much fire. For the longest time, people have considered wildfires in Southern California to be an unusual event. But we know now from historical studies that wildfires, large catastrophic wildfires, have been part of this landscape for a very long period of time. The weather conditions that cause these fires occur every year. And although we've made a great deal of progress in reducing the frequency of disastrous wildfires, fire risks cannot be completely eliminated on this landscape. Thus, in Southern California, we need to change the way we look at fires to prepare and manage for them as we would for earthquakes, floods, and other inevitable disasters. In other words, learning how to live with fire. Some municipalities destroy large swaths of chaparral in the name of fire control. In Southern California, there's a false notion that there's an unnatural amount of vegetation. Well, that's just not true. We have big fires because of hot, dry weather, making virtually anything fuel. What happens oftentimes along roadsides or on ridges, they'll use these giant masticators to grind the chaparral down to the ground. Mastication is a fire control technique that chews up and eliminates woody vegetation. And so what that ultimately leads to is the area being invaded by non-native invasive weeds, which are much more flammable than the native chaparral that was destroyed in the first place. It expands the fire season. So normally, the fire season is anywhere between May through December. And now it's 12 months out of the year because there's virtually kindling because of the dry grasses underneath the chaparral and long road sites, creating a highly flammable environment, which didn't exist before. The scientists continue to study the effects of mastication and whether its benefits outweigh the impacts on nature. And what we really need to do is understand the environment and understand that fire is part of that environment. And instead of trying to make the fires adapt to us, <laughs> we have to create communities and live in situations where we allow the fires to burn around us, not through us. That is, can more homes be saved by looking at prevention on the home front instead of just focusing on stopping wildfires from entering the urban environment? My research showed that the most important factor in whether a house burns is the tree canopy overlap of the roof. And the reason for this is not because the tree catches fire and then catches the house on fire, but rather it's a litter that falls into the gutters on the roof next to the house that ignites and then can catch the house on fire. Wildlife impacts are also being studied as part of the Southern California Wildfire Risk Scenario Project. The scientists are examining the aftermath of several 2003 and 2007 fires in San Diego that destroyed over 300,000 acres. They're surveying the wildlife and vegetation communities before and after the fires. So we had been studying this site since 1995, and so we had a, a real good sample of what animals, and, and when I say animals, I'm talking about reptiles, amphibians, small mammals, and also vegetation. And so we had a good idea of what was here before the fires. And then when it burned in 2003, we came back to those same exact sites using that same technique. Since the fires, shrub cover has decreased. We went from about 80% cover to about 40% cover. So that's about a 50% decrease in shrub cover. And all the leaf litter that was on the ground, that all burned off. And so now there's a lot more direct sunlight hitting the ground, drying the ground out, and creating a very unsuitable habitat for slender salamanders. And so since the fires uh, over, over the last seven years, we've only seen like four salamanders total. Whereas we used to see four salamanders every month when we would come out here. Results like these have been demonstrated for a number of species. They suggest that with increased fires, many wildlife species will be unable to cope with the rapid change to their habitat. 
Furthermore, some ongoing fire management practices, such as creating fuel breaks and creating defensible space, are actually eliminating wildlife habitat. One of the desired outcomes for this project for us at USGS is, is that these natural environments, that this chaparral, that this coastal sage scrub, that these environments that are characteristic of Southern California will still be around 100 years in the future. We want to make sure that these plant communities are around. We also want to make sure that the wildlife that lives inside these vegetation communities are still around, because this is part of our heritage for Southern California.